Hi friends, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles and I have a fun project for us here today. I got a request um, in my video showing you things I was making for my craft fair. I showed you a folio that featured a bunch of gift tags that you can use lots of different ways um, during the holiday season. And it was made with some really pretty um, Stamperia paper that was like a pink, pink Christmas theme. And I don't have any more of that paper. So I decided to show you the same design, but with um, an Echo Park paper. So let me real quick um, show you that. That, that is um, this kit here, Christmas Flora Joyful. There's several of the Christmas florals Floras, and this one is joyful. So a bunch of pattern papers and some stickers and things like that for that kit. And then I did still have this um, Stamperia Classic Christmas paper kit, and it's super pretty. And so I'm going to make another one of these for you guys using this kit. I'll link both of these in the description in case you want to take a look at them. They're available lots of different places and websites, but they are available on Amazon. So we are going to replicate this, hopefully, <laughs> using the Stamperia paper. And I did learn recently that um, I, I always said um, th that that company's name is pronounced like Pizzeria, so Stamperia, and I used to say Stamperia. I think I'm saying it right. Thank you, whoever helped me with that. Um, but these are the pieces we're going to use. So I have a bunch of pretty... Um, larger gift tags. These are going to look gorgeous in a journal or some journaling or embellished up and tied onto a gift for someone or a package, right? Um, so many beautiful ones. I love that candy cane pattern. So I'm also going to show you some of the things I like to do with these to make them look pretty, but we'll do that towards the end. I am going to have all of the descriptions for you in the description. So you'll know um, the size of the papers you're going to need and, you know, where to fold and all of that. Um, I don't know if there's really any official scoring. I think it's mostly like just folding things in half, things like that. So the first thing you're going to need, and I do have my cheat sheet, is a piece of paper that is 8 inches tall. So we're going to go for 8 inches and then the 12 inch wide. All right, and we're gonna fold this piece in half. And look, it's the Christmas tree. I did a folio, a different style folio, but similar using this paper, and then did a tutorial on how to make it with, with another set of paper. And this one is very similar in construction, yet it doesn't have like the different pages sewn in. It's just that kind of tri-fold open with the pockets and a bunch of tags. That's that's what we're making, but I love this piece that has the tree on the front. And we'll put some kind of closure on this one too. Okay, so eight by 12 folded in half. That That's kind of your base. Then we are going to, I'm gonna go ahead and install the pockets. Let me find those two pieces for you that go on the front and back cover. And I think I'm gonna use this side. They're both pretty. It is gonna cover up the cute little stockings, but you'll get to see them a little bit. These two pieces measure la -dee -da -dee, um, five and three quarters by seven and three quarters. So let's just make sure, yes. Five and three quarter inches by seven and three quarter inches. I'm going to round the corners. I already rounded the corners on that one. That part's optional. If you don't want round corners, you skip this part. And then we're also going to put a, a shallow thumb notch at the top. So you can see that this is a pocket back there, but not a super deep one. That, that's just my personal preference. You can do your thumb notch however you want. 
I do like to hold the two pieces together so that the notch is the same, so hold them nice and secure. And I'm just eyeballing the center and cutting a notch. All right, and these get installed like really big pockets because we're gonna put those larger flap pieces down in here and then decorate or add pockets to them. Again, you can, each one of these you make, you don't have to make like the pockets and the decorations exactly the same. I'll show you some options and then you can choose. All right, so I am inking. I am using my Distress Ink in Walnut. And that is my favorite brown. I say that all the time. Um, if you guys wanna see any of the supplies that I use, I do have an Amazon storefront. It's an affiliate link, which means Amazon pays me a few pennies if you end up making a purchase. It's at no cost to you. So um, clicking on my links and taking a look helps me out because it has Amazon show more people my storefront, which is awesome, right? And like I said, I'll also link the two kits that I'm using in case you're interested. I have not inked this, the, the main folio yet, but I am going to put a little bit of ink just to help us see that center score line a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see, but that way when I'm going to line this up, I can get these nestled in here, hopefully perfect, right? Or as close to perfect as possible. I'm going to use my uh, wet white glue and again, this is the Line Co PVA glue that I'm using today, which I love. And I found a great deal on this during the Amazon Prime Big Deal day in October. I wish I had known about it earlier. I let you guys know when I think there were like just, I don't know, 12 hours left because that's when I found it. But I think a few people were able to hopefully take advantage of that. I know I did, so I got two of the large, not the, like, I mean, they have, like, a huge one that's, like, $65, but I got this size, two of these, um, for, like, $18 and something, which is, was a really good deal, so I was excited about that. I use a lot of glue, if you guys haven't noticed, and I think because I put it in these little bottles, and I use these thin little lines of glue, I don't realize how much I'm using until suddenly I've gone through one of those big bottles and I'm like, holy cow. And I've thought about buying that great big giant one, but I, uh, I, I don't know if it'll like dry out or anything. If anybody has bought glue in bulk like that, I mean, I'm thinking it's one of those big jugs. Um, I don't know. Let me know what you think. I have not done that because I feel like I definitely go through the size I bought fairly quickly and then I open up a new one and I don't have to worry about it even though I'm filling these up about it like drying out or clumping up or something. Okay. Now we are going to do the angled pocket that hinges and flips. Now, we could have waited to put this on here to make sure we could cover up if we wanted to this hinge. And I did tuck it up under this layer. You can also have the hinge on the back. So I forgot and did it this way this time. So we'll see what happens. But if you haven't glued your gist down yet on the back cover, maybe wait in case you want that option. All right, now you need, these are the two pieces. Um, two pieces of paper. One is going to be five and a half inches by seven and three quarters, and the other is six and a half inches by seven and three quarters. So, for those of us that aren't the biggest math wizards, the full piece is 12 inches. So, basically, take one of your 12 by 12 pieces of paper and cut it to the height of seven and three quarter inches. And then you'll have that section left to do something with. And then um, cut one piece that's five and a half inches and you will be left with a piece that is six and a half. And that way um, your angled pocket that we're gonna make here, um, if you want to, you can make it match 
you know, have the same paper on both sides and I have to decide which side I want to use, if I'm gonna use the holly or the stripes, or you can do it like this and get to see, do it like this, and get to see a little bit of both. So, anyway, I'll think about that. I kinda of like seeing this blue because you could also end up um, uh, journaling on it. Goodness, Pam. Okay, first thing you wanna do is take the six and a half inch piece and we are gonna score it at one inch. So there is a score, score it at one inch. And this is going to make the hinge for your angled pocket. So go ahead and just fold that so you get a sense of how you're gonna want it. And this is, um, if we hinge it this way, ooh, it can, it can do, you can do all kinds of things. So we can install the hinge like this and have it on the front here. And this is where you might wanna cover it up with a pocket. Or I can put the hinge this way. It's still gonna open up. And then we'll have this on the back. I think I'm gonna do this one that way because I like seeing the holly on the back. So that's gonna be fun. And then this piece, don't glue anything yet. Don't glue anything yet, because we still have to make the angle. Um, again, we can have the two pieces that sort of match the blue, blue, or I can do this and we have the blue and then we get to see the holly, or if you want to have two sides holly. I kind of like it being the blue. It kind of breaks up with these Christmas trees for me, That a lot of that pattern. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, set this portion aside. And I want you to take the piece that is five and a half by seven and three quarters. And we are going to make a mark because I want to draw a line to get the angle the way I want it. And the first mark we're going to make is from this top right hand corner. I'm going to do one a dot at one and three quarter inches in. I'm using my pencil. If I mess up, we're gonna be able to erase. So just like I'm doing a little line. I don't know if you can see it, one and three quarter inches. And I can erase that later. And then from the bottom left corner, I want you to come up two inches and a quarter and make a mark. Right there. All right, and I don't know if you guys can see these, but that's what I did, and I will have this for you in the description. Connect the two lines. All right, yay! Now the, the next piece, we're gonna use this as the pattern, and we're not gonna have to do the measuring and the marking, yay! I try to do as little measuring as possible, but on some of these projects, you just can't get away from it. <laughs> okay, so now we have this lovely piece of paper we can use for something else, so set it aside. And then you're going to line your paper up, and again, make sure you have the sides, you know, what you want to be vi visible together. If you're not sure, grab, you know, gra grab your folio and think about it and I am happy I'm gonna cut this piece off but I'm happy with how this is looking so now let me ink this so you can see that crease line I am going to just lay it here now you can go through the measuring again if you want to just make sure when you come in um, that one and three quarter inches, you come in from the score line, not the edge. But I'm just gonna hold mine here and I'm gonna pick up my pencil and I'm gonna just draw a line. I'm gonna just use this as the pattern or a template. And if you were super confident, I guess you could just hold it <laughs> and cut it. Okay. So again, just make sure you line it up with 
this left hand side to the score mark not all the way over here or your angle would have been incorrect now they match up perfectly isn't that great now we are going to before we glue anything together I am going to round the corners that I want to round. So I'm going to hold this together very carefully. And I'm going to round that corner, this corner, and I also rounded the hinge, okay? So we kind of have three layers in there. And I'm using my half inch corner round. Isn't it cute? All right, now we just need to, um, we can do a little bit of inking. You can always ink more later. A um, little bit of inking, and we're gonna glue this together and then add it to our folio. And if you want, you can use some washi tape along with the glue. You could use two-sided tape, you know, lots of different ways. To add it together. We are going to see this hinge the way I'm choosing to install mine on the back. So I'm going to ink it. So again, once you have this like this, the other one I installed this way and that looks fine too. I mean, I don't even mind seeing that on this side, but that's how I installed it. And then I put the pocket over top. This one I'm going to install with my hinge on the back and I'm going to have this lovely strip of holly on there. All right, so let's glue our pocket together first. And it is easier to add the glue to this layer. So we're going to add glue a little bit on that curve to help it have some stability. I'm adding glue right along the score line and then along the bottom. And we're gonna have a nice big angled pocket that stays open. And then just line it up, be as careful as you can to get it nice and neat. And it's gonna be beautiful. All right. And see, now you have a pocket in here. All right, and something quite large will fit in there. Now, this is a smidge shorter. I didn't make it the eight inches tall. I made it seven and three quarter inches tall. So it's going to nestle in here. So you do wanna make sure you have it lined up the way you want it before you, you glue it down. I'm holding everything nice and secure with my left hand while I add the glue to the flap. And you'll want to give this, you know, enough time to dry before you go crazy playing with it. All right. I did pretty good. I didn't have too much glue ooze out on me. Oh, uh, see how simple and fun? Now we're going to add pockets and flips and fun things like that. So I'm going to open this up and let that just sit there for a minute. And now we're going to do the flips that are gonna flip down. And these are the two pieces that I chose. And in order to use a piece that is left over from making, um, making one of these pockets, I can't remember which, I think it's this one, um, or the, the angled pockets, this piece is four and a quarter inches wide by 12 inches. The one I cut from another piece of paper, I made four and a half. This is optional. You can make them both four and a half. You can make them both four and a quarter. Both of them fit in the pocket. I don't think you really notice that much that one's wider than the other one, but you know, it's up to you. That's what I've chosen to do to get what I feel is the most bang out of my buck for my paper. And I like it. Now I'm just folding, I'm gonna fold both of these in half and I am going to round the corners. I'll probably later go back and ink this. But let me show you, you can decide which one we want in which pocket. But they fit in there nicely. If you want, you don't have to fold these in half, you could 
uh, make a decision like do you want this to come all the way down and if that's the case you would score it at let me get that measurement for you if you want it to hang all the way down like this you would score this piece of paper at four and a quarter okay and then the part that tucks in here would only be four and a quarter inches, and then this would be a long tuck flap. So I'll do that to show you. These I just did in half, but I'm trying to show you options that you really can, and, and this one isn't the only one, <laughs> the, only, the only variety. You, you really can, like if your paper has a certain pattern that you really like, there's no reason you can't look look at that and then maybe fold it at that point, right? So that was at the four and a quarter. So you have a long one. This one is in half. Uh, di different different options, and they both I think look great. All right, I'm gonna round the corners of this one as well, just because I like everything to sort of match. And depending on the patterns you choose will depend on how you want to decorate and where you want to add pockets, probably. All right, we've got these two. Now, you have an option when you fold it up, you can fold it up like this, right? And we're gonna have pockets here and pockets here. But another fun thing to do is to do that so you get a little more feel of interaction. Flip, 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 open up, whatever we're gonna have here. These are fairly decorative pieces. I used some with some smaller patterns and I put the really crazy pattern on the back. I might even put like a neutral kind of writing paper on this card for some, you know, in case you wanna use it for journaling. But we're gonna put a big pocket on this left-hand side. We're gonna add some pockets to our angle page. I, again, I put a pocket on the outside of this one because it was a little more neutral. And then we're going to do a big crisscross pocket. So we're just going to play with it and see what we like with the papers that we have. I don't know if I want to cover up those goodies. So maybe we'll put something here as a tuck spot. We could do a belly band or a, a pocket. Hope I'm not confusing everybody. I just like you to know your options. <laughs> okay, let's do this pocket. And this piece of paper is five and a half inches by two. If you want it a little deeper, you can make a deeper one. Again, don't, don't be limited just because that's how I made mine. I'm gonna round just the two bottom corners. And I did pick this piece of paper out because I like where it says a Merry Christmas to you. <laughs> and again, it already is sort of decorated. And all of these, um, Stamparia patterns, they get a little busy, but I just think in the end it just looks so fun. And then if we add some, you know, ribbons and embellishments and some other things, you just get something that is so fun and a little extra. But again, I envision this would be such a great gift for someone. And then they can use all the tags we're going to put inside for their own gifts or their own Christmas cards or, again, for a Christmas journal or scrapbook they're working on. All right, we'll come up with something to put here. And I'm gonna think about if we're gonna put anything on this piece. All right, let's make the big crisscross pockets. So for this one, you're gonna start with a square that measures five and three quarters by five and three quarters. And then you're gonna wanna cut from corner to corner to make two pockets that are going to crisscross. Mine definitely have an orientation. If you want, if I want, I can use the little um, gingerbread men, but again, I kind of like seeing these goodies and I don't mind these are going to be turned sideways. So I'm going to do that for mine. Um, you can place this on your paper trimmer, trimmer and cut that square um, at, at the angle. You could also take your ruler and a pencil and draw a line connecting those two corners and then cut it with your scissors. So 
you know, use the tools and the supplies you have. And of course, as always, you don't have to use these papers. Use whatever papers you want. Okay, so this is making a really nice big crisscross pocket. I am because I'm staying with my rounded corner piece. I'm gonna make sure everything is lining up. And what I'm noticing, and I remember this from when I made the first one, the corners are just hanging off. And this is the one we're gonna see this corner right here. So this is what I'm going to do. This one's going to be underneath. So honestly, with this one, I'm just going to chop it off a little. All right. And when we layer this here, see, you don't even see it. But this one, I would like it to match the round of the corner. So I'm lining everything up as close as I can get it. I'm not letting this wiggle. I let it wiggle, holding it securely. And I'm gonna take my corner rounder, <laughs> if I can figure out how to hold it. There we go. And stick it in here. And it just gave it the slightest little um, sliver off and it's gonna match up great now. All right, I want this layer on top, so I'm gonna start with this one. You really can do it either way, it's up to you. I'm doing it because of the pattern on my paper. All you need to do is add glue to these two sides. Now, if you watched the other video on how to make one of the bigger folios that have multiple pages sewn in, like a little signature, you're gonna see a lot of the same, it's a lot of the same things. Really the only difference is this one doesn't have as many pages and it has this fun angled pocket. And I know especially when you're newer to paper crafting and making journals and folios, it really does help um, to, to see the different versions of a project. So I appreciate the request to show you how to make this. Like I said, this was that pink Santa one I showed that I actually already sold it, so I don't have it to show here at the beginning of the video. That's why I made this one for you. All right, and I do plan to put both of these up in my Etsy shop for sale. So I will make sure they are in the Etsy shop before this video goes live, which means they may already be sold. They may not. Sometimes things sell really fast and then sometimes they don't. <laughs> so that's okay. But later I'm going to go through and do quite a bit of inking. But for right now, I just wanted to see that seam inked as I'm looking at it. Okay. So we have our back pocket. We have our big corner kind of nestled pockets. Now let's work on some angled pockets to go on here. And I've got this Christmas tree paper again. These two pieces measure four by six and a half. So I have one that is four inches by six and a half. And I have another one that is four and a half by five and a half. And I'm gonna remind myself how I did these. Did the tall one and the short one. Okay, so again, it doesn't really matter. And it depends on too, like how much of this do I wanna cover up? The way I did the other one is, oh, there's the ruler, is I, I set it here and thought, okay, well, this is about where I want it. I looked at my angle and I literally drew a line and then cut it off and made the pocket. And that will work, but I'm, I'm thinking about bringing it up just because I, I don't know that I wanna cover up the bottom. I'm not sure. All right, I'll do it the way I had it planned so I don't confuse you guys. But I do think that that's a fun idea and a fun option. Ooh, maybe if I turn it. Let's do that. I can't help it, guys. I'm sorry. All right. So to make it like I did in the sample, take your four by, no, yeah, four by six and a half piece. 
uh, lay it on your page where you want it, get your ruler, decide how, how big you want this pocket to be, you, you, you choose, draw a line, cut it, you're gonna round the corner and install it. I hope that's clear. I am gonna make this one a touch different <laughs> and I'm gonna use the same piece of paper but I'm just gonna turn it knowing I'm gonna install it at this point. Just leave that for decoration. Again, I'm gonna look at my angle. I'm gonna leave how much? I'm gonna leave an inch, like right at an inch and get the angle the way I want it. It's the same premise. It's just me. Um, whoa, it would be nice if I held my, rule, my ruler still while I used my pencil. Okay, and now I'm just gonna cut it off on that line. And when I get ready to use this piece, I can erase that line. Look, a cute little snuggly pocket. So excited. Okay, let me ink it. I hope that also just showed you guys, you, you can change the design up. If you have a piece of paper, like, like let's say you're using a paper kit that you've already had or you know some paper and all right, I don't need to round any corners on this one. Mark off that pencil mark. Um, and you get to this point and the piece of paper that you think is just gonna look beautiful on this angled pocket page is not the measurement I gave you. Well, lay it on here and see if you can make it work. See, see if you can turn a pocket or do something on here that you will enjoy. <laughs> Um, using that piece of paper. You you really can change change the design and the patterns up a little bit. All right, now again, for this side, I had intended to turn the pocket this way, and that's what I did on here. I just cut it at a pretty sharp angle, right? I just went from corner to corner and left this nice big pocket there. But because I want to... I want to preserve that lovely design on the paper. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna guesstimate it about of an inch, get the angle the same, draw my line, and cut it out. All right, and this way, I didn't mind the trees being sideways if I had installed the pocket, you know, the other way. But this is kind of nice. Now the trees are standing up straight in the correct direction. And I just showed you another option for the type of pocket shape. All right. Glue on the two sides. Not being the neatest, but that's okay. With these pockets, if you take up a little bit of that real estate, it's not that big of a deal. But I do try to be neat when I'm gluing pockets. All right, so we have the great big pocket. We have a pocket here, a pocket here. On the sample, I used a pretty neutral paper and I put a little horizontal pocket with matching paper um, on that side. So again, you, you could add another pocket if you wanted to. Because of the pattern of my paper, I'm not gonna do that on this one. All right, I am gonna think about, I'm gonna get out my journaling cards and tags. There's more in this kit than just these, but these are the ones that I've cut out. And again, that's that pretty uh, candy cane, that's the word, candy canes. Now, what might be fun on here would be to almost, you know, cover up some of that pattern and to have some space to write. Um, but then we would, you know, lose the stocking. So I could look through these and see is there one that I particularly like the back side or I don't mind maybe not getting to see the front. There's the tree again. Love this Santa. Um, or we could just put one, you know, for, for a decorative element. But if we do that and we glue it in, again, no problem doing that, um, the person who has this, th th this will be where they use it. I guess they could always cut this up if they wanted to. But again, my vision with this is to offer this as a gift to someone 
um, or to be able to give it as a gift, and they use all of these fun tags. So, you know, it just kind of depends. So see, like, we'll be tucking a bunch of these in all of the pockets. I'm going to put some of the smaller ones in, in that pocket, but this will work for some of the large ones. See? And they'll stick out. And they'll be so cute. Do the house. So see how cute they start to look in here. Um, like that kitty cat. I like all of them. So another idea would be to put some kind of little tuck spot on here so that you see it and it breaks up this pattern. But then the person can pull it out. So let's do that. Let's add a, a little tuck spot on this one. And I think on this one, I'm going to add a little belly band and then we can slide one of the cards up under it. So we have a little project and that's okay. I have a few of the pieces, the off cuts from the pages that we used in case we wanna use any of these. So we can look and see what we think will look good. This is the actual um, border from this, this paper. It was on here somehow. And it's really pretty. And we also have the stockings. So it says cheery Christmas greetings. And it fits actually perfectly for this width, I think. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use part of it that says cheery Christmas greetings and I need to cut this because this piece is four and a quarter I'm going to cut my strip that I have four and a quarter so it's going to fit oops I made it a little too long that's okay I guess I didn't yeah, I don't have an actual four and a quarter mark on here on my ancient <laughs> um, chopper, but there we go. Now we've got it. Um, we could put a notch if we want to. I don't think I need it, and I'm going to just glue this down as a, I've got to decide where I want it. And I want to make sure one of these large cards fits in here. And I want it towards the bottom. I really like this piece here. I'm going to come up just a little. Again, I'm making decisions based on the pattern of the paper. Hmm, do I want to round those corners? I don't think so. Again, personal choice. All right, this is where I do need to be careful, though, with my glue on the edges to not take up my space. I came over a little bit on that one. I think it'll be okay. All right, I'm gonna come up a little. All right. And I, I really need to let that, <laughs> I, I need to let it stick, but let's just make sure he's gonna go in there. Yay, I love Santa. All right. And we'll put a couple of, I'm going to turn this one this way just so we see the writing space. And then this one, unless I just put a piece of ribbon or something, I'm going to leave it here. But on this panel, we are going to put a belly band. And again, I got to decide. Are this, we haven't seen much of the stockings. Is that crazy? It's a little crazy, but let's do it. I think I want it to be a little more narrow. So we will chop it off, but let me mark again. I need it to be the six inches, and I know I don't have a six inch mark on this trimmer, so that'll help me get it to the right length. And how wide do I want my belly band to be? I'm gonna make it one and a quarter inch wide. This is me a little bit crafting on the fly, making decisions, again, kind of based on the papers and what I think will look good. You can certainly do yours exactly the way I'm doing mine, but I hope you noticed on the other one how I installed pockets and things were a little different, again, based on my paper. All right, I'm gonna glue this one down. You guys, I have to just say, by the way, if you're still listening and with me, I appreciate 
you guys watching my videos and commenting and subscribing to my channel, all of those things. The dream that I had, I don't know, this time last year when I was making arrangements to to think about leaving my long-term career, <laughs> um, working with people with disabilities and employment issues that, that I love. Oh, are these not going to fit in here? I don't think they are, but here's how they will fit. I'm going to trim one down. Let's just trim it down. If I trim it to the um, size of the actual pattern of the card, it's going to fit. So that's what I'm going to do while I'm yapping at you. Um, but, you know, when I had the dream to say, you know what, I really want to do something creative and artistic on a full-time basis. And I'd had my Etsy shop for a few years, you know, my social medias, my YouTube channel, all of that. And things were just sort of making a little bit of money here and there, but I just didn't have the time, you know, really to commit to it. Um, I just couldn't have imagined. Um, I still have hopefully more to do, right? More to come, uh, more growth, I hope. Um, but you know, it's starting to happen and it's because of you guys and y'all are awesome. And, um, I certainly, I don't know, I can't do it without your support and encouragement and you watching my videos and, and all of the things that you guys do to help me be successful. Look at that. How cute. Um, so thank you. And I hope I say that enough. Um, I love the, the community here on YouTube and other social media platforms and the support and all of those things. Whoops. All right, so I did discover the way that I, I wanna put this kitty cat where I can see it a little more. Um, one of my very best friends loves cats. Um, so I may have to do something Christmas kitty for her. Um, these are gonna be a little large for how I installed these pockets. And of course they fit in this big pocket with no problem. But the good news is I have all of these little ones, right? You can turn them in different directions and it's not a problem at all, okay? Um, fun, fun. Now, what I did wanna do is take just a minute. Again, we can add ribbons. Um, oh, I am gonna put a closure on this one. And, and then tie a ribbon. And I think it's going to be, I'm pulling everything out so don't accidentally punch it. I think what I want to do is just a simple brad and, and a ribbon, one of the big chunky, not brads, eyelets, one of the big chunky ones. But I also want to punch a circle to put behind it. Oh, let's see. Maybe a tree. The tree's gonna get somewhat covered up by the eyelet, but let's see. Let's see. What a little tree here. We'll do that. That one right there. Um will look like. And then I'm gonna show you how I plan to decorate up some of my um some of these cards to give it a little bit of a little bit more more extra um, just in case you're interested and you have a similar type of paper that you want to do that on all right so I'm gonna put that little tree there and we are gonna punch a hole in them to put one of these eyelets in I'm a little obsessed with these eyelets um, I like the size of them they set nicely, and I also like how easy it is then to pull the different ribbons and things through that I want to use. So, all I did was glue the circle down. Now I'm going to punch what I hope is the center. <laughs> we'll put the eyelet in. I really wish my regular crocodile would work, but it won't. And I'm just not ready to invest in a new one when I have big big bite here who seems to be still working okay okay and I could have punched the hole with big bite too but all right there we go I'm basically using this one here as a hole puncher but that's okay all right so I took everything out of this pocket because I did not want to accidentally punch a hole uh and have a problem because that would have upset me if I had messed up one of my cute little 
tags. And again, this size tag, of course, could go in this pocket. You can put some in these pockets. You know, you don't have to only have a little bit. And I think they have these little bitty ones. The little bitty ones might do well by having a shallow little pocket somewhere for us to put them. So, perhaps I'm going to cut, I like this, it says wish list. And I'm gonna cut it just to nestle in this design part right here. And then we can put some of these little tags. Or I could put it right up here on this pocket. Let me cut it out and then we'll decide. I'm going to make it, we'll start with three and a half inches because I can always make it shorter. So, hmm. I want it to be three, what's half of three and a half? I don't know, I'm just trying to figure out with the wish list <laughs> approximately what will look good. Go a little bit bigger than three and a half just to get my pattern again on my paper. And I'm gonna pop it, I, I cut it at one and a quarter again. So I can put it here and we can add some cute little tags or I can install it up here and we'll cut it smaller. I'm gonna put it down here. Um, and I think this is gonna be cute. And then again, I promise I'm gonna show you a couple of ideas I have besides just maybe some ribbon and things to dress up some of the tags. I have mentioned before that I like using liquid pearls and I had somebody say, what are liquid pearls? <laughs> or ask me that. And I thought, oh, well, let's use some. So the thing with liquid pearls is, and, and again, I have these linked in my Amazon shop. These are the three I got out to use. They come in different colors and um, like little like metals or whatever. So I did do a liquid pearl right here on this button that I put on the front of this one. And that's this... Um, what color is this? Hmm. I'm sure it's on here and I'm just not seeing it. Liquid pearls. Hmm. Let's see, liquid pearls. Well, this one's kind of bronzy. This one's kind of silver, silvery and this is kind of a pearly white. <laughs> That's what I'm calling them. But I put one right there. But on these tags, let's get Santa out. You do have to let this dry. So if, if I start putting any like on the tree and doing all that, I've got to let it sit and let it dry. So we're not going to do that right now. I'm going to find a fun ribbon. But we'll do some on Santa or how about we do it on the stocking because I'm seeing some really fun things. I'm going to use the white shimmery. And it literally just comes out. You can do these little... Um, dots of it and then when it dries you that one kind of had a you know how like meringue will have a peak sometimes these do peak they look okay when they dry like that and you can kind of smush them a little um and sometimes I can get it without the peak it just depends this gives it some dimension it gives it a little extra bling and it doesn't really add much, you know, thickness or anything. It's just, I think, super cute. So I did it on these little pieces that kind of look like white dots or white pearls already. So fun, fun, fun. You can kind of go fast. You can go slow. <laughs> um, I could come in with another color if I want to. A lot of times when I have flowers, I will come in and do the center so let me get out this bronzy now again be careful not to run your hand through it be careful to just let it dry um you, you don't want to mess it up so i can do the center of those flowers it's gonna look fabulous i love it and so a lot of times when i'm gonna use something like this um and not add a lot of other things to it. I will go through with the liquid pearls 
and add that dimension and I love it. And I have used these back from my scrapbooking days 20 years ago. I don't know if they were packaged exactly this way, but it's almost like a little glue product maybe. All right, so then you have to find a fun place to let this sit and not get messed up. And if you wanna ink some, if you wanna add some ribbons, you can do that. So I'm gonna set this aside so I don't mess that one up. But I will probably add some liquid pearls to some of these and some of the little features inside. I don't know, I might not, I might. <laughs> and then um, I may go back and add some fun ribbons and tags and things like that. So I've gotta just decide how much more I wanna embellish it. I do want to put some type of pretty, pretty ribbon or I don't know, even like a little bit thicker. I think I have some here on my desk like a baker's twine, like this is a thicker one. That would be pretty, wouldn't it? I like that, let's see how that looks. Um, You could do one like with a gold piece through it. Lots of options. I think the one that I had as a demo in the other video, um, I gotta figure out how long I want this. Um, I, What did I do? Um, I had a pretty thick piece of ribbon and um, it had like, it was a neutral then with a red and white and it was thick and it went through there and I just pulled it through and then tied it. I didn't even worry about attach like attaching, attaching it and it worked really well. So again, play with the different ribbons or you know laces that you have and find something you think looks good. All right, let's wrap it around a couple of times. I think I have, um, definitely have more string than I need. Let's tie it to this side and see what that looks like. Now, wouldn't this be a darling gift to give a special friend to help them as they're prepping for Christmas, you know? Um, They'll have all those beautiful papers, and um, I'm gonna tie it more in the center. All the beautiful little cards and tags inside. You can decorate them some more, or let them do that, you know? Let them add a little extra. I love it. I think it's so cute. I like the back. And this paper even has some lines, so if you wanna use this more as a journal, um, or to put into a, a Christmas family scrapbook or journal, um, you can certainly do that too. These cards are wonderful because they have writing space on them. These are gonna be so cute with a hole and a piece of twine tied onto a Christmas gift for somebody. So, much fun. I'm going to really quickly undo it because I want to go back where we put this pocket and I want to tuck just a couple of these in here. Look, didn't that work well? One of the larger ones will fit too. There's Santa again. There's quite a few of these. Let's just tuck them all in. All right. I hope you guys liked the video. If you haven't already, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Uh, let me know what you think of this one and if you plan to make one. Until next time, I hope you guys all have a really wonderful day. <laughs> Thanks.